After three weeks at day camp, my favorite activity is still pottery. Mouse, Russ Bindle, and Sam Sweeney agree. The four of us haven't switched to activities yet, even though we are supposed to try something new every week. Denise says by the end of summer we should each have a really good bowl to take home with us. My mother is not as happy about pottery as I am. This is because I come home covered with clay every day. It even gets in my hair and ears. The only bad things about pottery are I have to put up with a lot of shampoos and Mom is always chasing me with the Q-tips. Russ Bindle's mother runs the camp office. She's pretty nice. Russ looks just like her. He's a year older than me, but so small he looks about eight. And between Russ and his mother, I have never seen so many freckles. Sam Sweeney reminds me of Peter Hatcher. He thinks he knows everything. And when his clay elephant broke in the kiln, he blamed it on me and Mouse for making too much noise while it was baking. Denise told him it wasn't anybody's fault. And maybe he left too many cracks in his elephant because, besides breaking in half, one tusk also fell off. Sam is the only one of us who doesn't use the pottery wheel. He's always making animals, and elephants are his favorite. I can't imagine what he does with all his elephants. Mouse and I call him Babar in private. Of course, we can't stay at pottery all day. That's our main activity, from 9.30 until lunchtime. After lunch, we are supposed to have a quiet hour. We usually break up into small groups and sit under the trees. Most of our counselors play the guitar and we sing a lot. I have learned some very unusual songs at day camp. One is about Anne Boleyn, who was married to King Henry VIII of England. But when she didn't have any boy babies, he decided she should have her head chopped off. And in this song, she is back haunting King Henry's castle, with her head tucked underneath her arm. I like to sing the song, but I don't like to think about her walking around like that. She reminds me of the Headless Horseman. This morning, Denise asked me to go to the office to tell Mrs. Bindle that she is expecting an important phone call. When I got there, Mrs. Bindle was trying to use the copy machine. I can't believe this, she said. It's jammed again. I watched for a while as she tried to get it working. Want me to help you? I asked. That's very nice of you, Sheila, but you better get back to your activity. And tell Denise I'll come and get her when her phone call comes through. I still didn't go because all of a sudden I had the greatest idea of how to show the Terrytown kids that I was an expert at something besides bandaging legs. We had a class newspaper last year, I told Mrs. Bindle. I used to run off the copies in the office. Nobody had to help me. I did it all by myself. That must have been very interesting, Mrs. Bindle said. She was trying to pull the jammed paper out of the copier. It was. I could use your computer and copier if we had a camp newspaper, couldn't I? But we don't have a camp newspaper. She had the copier pulled apart now. We should, I said. Should what? she asked. Have a camp newspaper. But we don't. Maybe we will, I called, running out of the office. I ran right into Mr. Hillstrom, the director of our camp. He caught me so I didn't fall down. What's your hurry? he asked. Oh, Mr. Hillstrom, you're just the one I want to see, I told him. Do you know what we need here? No, what? A newspaper. A camp newspaper, and I've decided it's my duty to start one. Mr. Hillstrom said, that's a very good idea. I knew you'd think so. I'll be in charge of everything, I said. You may need some help, Sheila. Suppose I let you announce your plans this afternoon. Then you can form committees and get started. I don't need committees, I said. I'm very experienced. I know exactly what to do. Running a newspaper is a big job, Mr. Hillstrom said, and nobody does it alone. I can do it, Mr. Hillstrom. You'll see. I've even got a name picked out. What is it? he asked. It's a surprise. You'll find out next Friday when you read the first issue. Well, Mr. Hillstrom said, you seem determined to try it on your own, so good luck. Oh, thanks, Mr. Hillstrom. Thanks a lot. I ran back to Pottery and told everyone about our camp newspaper. When's it coming out? Mouse asked. On Friday, I said, and I'm going to be very busy between now and then. I may have to skip Pottery. You know, it's a big job to put out a paper all by yourself. That's what I was thinking, Denise said. What you need is a committee. Maybe you could get a reporter from each group to tell you what's going on. I'll help you, Mouse said. I'd like to be a reporter. 
I don't need any reporters, I told everyone. I can do all that myself. But if I'm a reporter, we can work together, Mouse said. We can be a team. It's my idea and I'm doing everything, I told her. Well, if that's the way you want to be about it, Mouse said. I could tell that Mouse was wishing she had thought of the idea of having a camp newspaper. And Russ and Sam were really surprised that I knew so much about it. Is my mother going to type it into the computer for you? Russ asked. Of course not, I told him. I know how to use a computer. That night, I wrote my first story. I called it Babar Strikes Again. It was all about Sam Sweeney and his clay elephants, but of course I never mentioned him by name. Starting the next morning, I made my rounds of all the activities. I carried my pad around with me and kept a pencil tucked behind my ear. I jotted down all kinds of interesting things and story ideas such as Libby the Dancing Skeleton and the real reason Denise goes barefoot. I discovered that at lunch. I was crawling around listening to bits of conversation when I noticed the bottoms of Denise's feet. She was sitting on the grass leaning against a tree, and the bottoms of her feet pointed up. I don't know how I ever missed seeing them before. They are covered with warts. No wonder she doesn't wear shoes. The next day was very hot, and as I trudged around from activity to activity, I wondered what Mouse, Russ, and Sam were doing at Pottery. I didn't come up with any new story ideas, so I wrote a weather report, arranged a list of do's and don'ts about the camp bus, and made up a crossword puzzle of counselors' names. I offered a prize to the first person to hand it in with all the right names. On Thursday, I went to the office to type the first edition of my camp newspaper. I figured it would only take a few minutes, and then I could go back to pottery. I was starting to miss Mouse in my regular camp routine. Mouse and Russ were probably having a lot of fun with the pottery wheel, and with me out of the way, they'd each have extra turns. But Mrs. Bindle said she was having a very busy day and couldn't possibly give up her computer. I have to use it, I told her. I have a newspaper to get out. Well, I'm sorry, Sheila. She went back to her work. After a minute, she looked up at me and sighed. Tell you what, she said. We have an old typewriter in the closet. I could let you use that. Thanks, Mrs. Bindle. But after typing for the longest time, I was still working on Babar Strikes again, and the wastebasket was full of my mistakes. That's when Mrs. Bindle suggested I handwrite my newspaper. I said that was fine with me because everyone in New York knows I had the best handwriting in the whole fourth grade. And you better use a stencil, Mrs. Mendel said, because our copy machine is down again. I'm waiting for the repairman to fix it. A stencil? I said. What's that? It's what you'll need to use the old mimeograph machine. Mimeograph machine? What's that? It's what we used in the old days, before we had copy machines. I helped her dig it out of the closet. It looked even older than the typewriter. I found out pretty fast that it's not so easy to write your best on a stencil. I kept goofing, and none of my lines came out straight. They all ran downhill. I threw away the first two stencils and made up my mind that the third one would be it, no matter what. Across the whole top of the page I printed, News Date by Sheila the Great. That looked really neat, except it took up a lot of room, so by the time I got to my crossword puzzle on the bottom of the page, I had to make it very small. I think I spelled counselor wrong, but you can't erase when you're using a stencil, so I had to leave it that way. By the time I finished drawing little pictures of our activities along the side margins of my newspaper, it was time to go home, and I was glad. On Friday morning, I was ready to use the mimeograph machine. I thought I'd zip out the 75 copies I needed and still make it back to pottery. Denise would probably let me use the wheel the whole time because I haven't had a turn all week. But I discovered that you can't just zip out copies on an old mimeograph machine. For one thing, the machine uses a special kind of ink. And after half an hour, my hands were full of it because the machine didn't have enough because every page came out blank. So I poured in a ton of ink and then when I cranked out the first few copies, big blobs of purple were all over the paper and you couldn't read anything I'd written. That's when Mrs. Bindle said she would get the machine going for me. I told her, what this camp needs is better office equipment. You'll be more experienced next week, Sheila. It probably won't take so long then. I didn't want to think about next week or the week after that, or spending the rest of the summer putting out the camp newspaper. 
Two hours later, I was still cranking out copies. They looked better than the first batch, which I had to throw away. This time, you could read practically everything. But the pictures in the margins weren't too clear. Still, if you looked hard, you could see that they were pictures. I couldn't understand why the crossword puzzle came out with such wavy lines, though. But at least I had my 75 copies of Newsday correctly. I didn't much care how they looked anymore. I was so glad to be done. I took my 75 copies, yelled goodbye to Mrs. Bindle, and ran out of the office. I personally handed a copy of my newspaper to every kid in camp. When Mouse saw it, she said, What kind of newspaper is this? And I said, What do you mean by that? She said, I've never heard of a newspaper that's handwritten. It doesn't even look like a newspaper to me. Well, that's how much you know, I told her. Anybody can type out a newspaper. It takes special talent and a lot more work to handwrite one. What are these funny smudges up and down the sides of the paper? Funny smudges? You must need glasses. Anyone with eyes can see their pictures of our camp activities. No kidding, Mouse said, looking closer. All I see are ink blots. You better have your eyes examined, I told her. Everyone else in camp knows that they are pictures. That's when Russ came up to me and said, Hey Sheila, why didn't you get my mother to help you? Then you wouldn't have gotten your papers all smudged up. Before I had a chance to say anything, two big boys walked over to us and handed me the finished crossword puzzle. Okay, Sheila the Great, one of them said. What's the big prize? That's when I realized I didn't have a prize to give. I was so sure nobody would be able to figure out my puzzle. Well, the other boy said. I had to think fast. How would it look if Sheila the Great didn't have a super prize to give? Congratulations, I said. You are both very lucky. Very lucky. Very, very lucky. So what do we win? They asked. You win the camp newspaper. That's what you win. Next week, you get to run it all by yourself. Unless, of course, you feel you need a committee. Most people aren't able to run newspapers by themselves. Some prize? I knew you'd think so, I told them, smiling at Mouse and Russ. That night, I made up my mind that the next time I think up such a great project, I will be the boss and my committee of workers will do everything else.